just crouch down here a second. Oh, that is better. Just having that little bit of a break. He has been battering us all the way up, but he's just beautiful. We're out on the Cleveland way and we're just going to sort of have a bit of a jaunt out and back and a camp somewhere along the way. I've not been feeling right for a couple of days. I've been sat at home. Weather's been horrendous. It hasn't given me any chance to sort of get out and do any camping. And this morning, to add to that, I put my milk on my granola, ate the whole lot thinking it doesn't quite taste right. And then uh, when I went to make my tea, I put the milk in my tea and it just curdled straight away. So yeah, that was another addition to feeling a bit rough. Anyway, fully charged battery. We are out and just desperate for this. So me and the lovely blue just sort of chilling out up there and we are going to pitch the tent somewhere around here. I don't know, we're just going to find somewhere as long as it's fairly sheltered, I'd say, because it's pretty, pretty bloody wild today. It is, And I've got the Laser Compact 2 all season tent again. So I ain't had that out for a while. So I thought I'd bring that. But yes, we are high up. So here we are, we've got a little bit of grass here, nestled between all these rocks, hopefully big enough just to fit this tent in. But I have done this before where I've played Tetris and just have to jiggery poker it just to sort of fit it in place. So yep, anyway, at least it's grass, at least it's sort of out of the wind. You can sort of still see the bracken sort of blowing around all around me, but it is not as bad as what it is just up on that top there. So anyway, let's get this tent out. So here we are, the Laser Compact All Season 2. And I do like this tent, but I just haven't used it for quite a long time. It's sometimes a little bit awkward to do, I would say. And the ground sheet at least will lay out exactly where we need this tent to go. You can see up there, that is pretty windy there. We bring it down a bit, it's just a little bit more sheltered. Whoa! <laughs> he says that will okay. Let's get my foot on that as well. Get a quick peg in. 
Well, I've got that mat down and I think it should work there. Just push some of these pegs in a little bit more. Let's try her out. <laughs> That's not too bad, is it? I think we can cope with that. So this tent has one sort of central pole, and then we've just got one upright pole either end. So it's quite a simple setup, but as I said, it can be a little bit awkward to do this one. So there we go, awkwardly fit it in there, and it looks awkward, it really does. It were like, you know when you cut your own bread and it ends up looking like a massive big sort of door wedge and you're trying to ram it in the toaster? <laughs> it's a bit like that. So anyway, let's get inside and have a quick look at all the kit. Oh, the weather's coming in now. Blue, come here, let's get you in here. Come on. Now let down. Good boy. Before he gets wet. Um, anyway, quick look at the kit. I've got the usual seat summit pillow, which I need to blow up. This is the Rab Alpine 600, and it's got a comfort limit of minus five. So that is plenty for tonight. I'll be sweating to death in that. I'm laid on my old uh, Thermarest Neo Air something or other. I don't even know, um, but I've had this like a hell of a long time and it is still going strong. I've actually got two of them because I've got two which fit into the back of my car so they sort of sit by side to make a double bed so that was the point of that but for tonight's dinner at least I've got something exciting to look forward to here rather than just a squally evening so I have bought a very much budget dinner by buying some reduced things so we've got some mushrooms there which are out of date and were 50p I've got some sausages which I've split up um, I bought six and they were reduced to £1.25 so I've brought four of those so the dog can have one I've got some mash this serves three so I think I'll just sort of split that in half and have half now sausage mushrooms mash and guess what some broccoli and just to uh, make that taste a little bit nicer I've also got some gravy granules so it's not a bad dinner really that I'd say Got some milk, some tea bags, and I hope I've got a stove to make it all. So there we go, that is dinner. So we are gonna sort of chill out, I think, for a little bit before we sort of start cooking. And I mean, cooking's gonna be a bit awkward because it's gonna be windy, but I think if I sort of sit it in front of me here, I'm fairly sort of sheltered from the wind, really. So anyway, we will see. But now this rain started, I think, we're gonna get sort of shut up shop for a while and just chill out. Well, we've just had an hour chilling out, listening to the wind whistle its way through the rocks up there and rustling through the bracken. Hey, Bluey. But it is time to make some food now. I think we're both hungry, so are you ready? Sausages, hey? Sausages. <laughs> right, let's get cooking. Right, I'm going to try to do this from a laid down position. It's not the tallest of tents anyway. I'm going to cook the sausages on this titanium plate and the mushrooms in there as well. And then what I'll do is I'll add the I'll add a little bit of water to that and boil it up with the gravy granules in so then I can have all that as one. And then the mash, what I'm going to have to do is use a cup that I've got out here. So let's just open this up. So I will boil some water in my pan and then I'll uh, mix it up in there I think and then hopefully that'll be enough for the 
mash but while I'm boiling it up I think I'll put the broccoli in the water so then I'm cooking the broccoli at the same time so hopefully it should all work okay but a very cheap meal this I think uh, all together what we've got 125 175 let's say two quid with the gravy plus a bit of broccoli and the mash so we're looking at about three pound for a full nice meal so yeah not bad at all really This uh, primer stove though is pretty good with the four sections there sticking out rather than just three. As for a, with a plate it's going to be perfect really, give it plenty of support. Still got to watch it. I've also got in here, so I've got a long handle spoon as always and a spork as always and then got some pot grips as well so I can just pick that up easy enough and it's nice and solid and then the last thing that I have in here is a Swiss army knife which always comes with me because obviously you do need a knife for cutting things with and I'm gonna have to cut these sausages in half and lay them flat down otherwise they'll take forever and I don't want to be wasting gas unnecessarily blowing about a bit which is a bit of a problem so I need to get the heat to this pan but we'll just see how it gets on eh? Sausages! So I'm going to chop these in half and then hopefully they'll just cook a lot quicker yeah they're not going to open very easily See what happens from that word start. And then just for wiping my fingers on, I've got a couple of wipes. Keep myself clean. I need to wipe my knife as well because that's got grease all over it now. Some mushrooms in there. Just add a little bit of water just to allow these to cook a bit quicker as well. Simple way of cooking really and quite a nice meal at the end of it. It's just a, a little awkward obviously doing it in a tent when it's windy because uh, the heat struggles to get to the pan because it keeps sort of uh, flapping about does those to the flames. Those sausages and mushrooms are cooking nicely so I'm just chopping up some broccoli and popping it into this water here and I'm cutting it fairly slim just so it cooks a bit quicker but to be fair I actually quite like well I do like broccoli raw it actually has probably a nicer taste so yeah yeah it's really good Right, so I'm going to take that off now and just put that aside. It will cool down, which is a bit of a shame, but I'll uh, add some gravy granules and a little bit of water to that. And then we'll just get this on the boil. I'm just going to do the mash with the water and the water's obviously cooking the broccoli at the same time. Let's crank that up. Sit back for five. Well, that's been simmering for a few minutes now so I'm gonna chop off the corner of this using my Swiss army knife again just got the scissors so then I can take uh, the other half of this home because I will not <laughs> need to eat all of it when it says it serves three it's a good thing about having a Swiss army knife though it comes in handy for all sorts 
it smells nice. Idahoan perfect buttery mash. Real potatoes grown in the heart of Idaho, Americans, America's potato state. Let's see what American spuds taste like, eh? So, I'm going to put some water into here first and then add that afterwards and just gently stir it in. So let's see if we can do this. In fact, let's turn that off first. While I'm making that, I need to get these uh, sausages back on and make that gravy. Oh, looking good though. So I'm completely guessing here. So with my fork, I'm gonna tickle a bit of this into here. <laughs> it's not the easiest thing to do laying down. Oh dear. But this is what happens when you're out camping. You just do whatever you can to get by. It's thickening up. Is that right, good stir? That looks good, actually. Let's have a quick test. <laughs> That's not bad at all, actually. Mm. I could just eat that. Right, I'll put the lid on there and hopefully, because it's an insulated cup, that's going to keep warm. I'll put it on blue mat as well, which will help. And then, let's get this back on. <laughs> it is bloody awkward, this. Let's give the dog this sausage, eh? Blue, what's this? Hey, no sausage. Are <laughs> you scared of it? What's up? It's just a sausage. Here you go. It's a sausage dog. <laughs> Did he taste it or not? No, it just goes straight down. Gone. <laughs> Good lad. So I'm going to add a bit more of this hot water. If we get that onto the boil. Got some gravy granules just in a bag there, so I'll just shove a few of them in, get that mixed up, and uh, yeah, it'll be a good dinner, will this? What do you think, dog? Hey, well, there we go, look at that sausages, mushroom gravy, some lovely mashed potato, and some broccoli. I mean, it don't really get much better, does it, when you're out camping? So, time to get stuck in. Let's see what it tastes like. Gravy and mushrooms, can't beat that. Straight away. Yep. I can cope with that for the evening. Mm. Very good. Throw some blue. Yeah. Nice. Good lad. Mm. Just feeding the dog now, and if I feed him out of this plate that I've been using, then. Um, He'll clean it for me. So a bit of dry food and a little bit of wet food for him. What's that look like, Blue, eh? Here you go. My boy. Bye, I'm well fed. That was lovely. It's uh, definitely a nice meal to have out here, but having it cooking in two sort of separate things, it's a little bit awkward to do, rather than just doing like a one pot, which is obviously the easiest thing when you're camping. 
But um, yeah, I mean, come summer and it's not so windy, it'd be a lot easier to do. I've made it work and to be fair, I was very happy with the final outcome of it. Anyway, I'm gonna take the dog out. We're gonna stretch our legs for a little bit. And then we'll come back in a bit to uh, make a cup of tea before bed. But I'm gonna take this head torch out. I've been using it a couple of times over the last sort of few weeks and it's pretty damn awesome to be fair. It's the Fenix HP 25R. So it's got a battery on the back and then it's got the LEDs on the front. So there's three different LEDs. You've got your main beam there. There's a red LED and there is just like a bit of a flood sort of LED. So having a red LED is great because if you're in the woods, you can just use it better for uh, just sort of being a bit more stealth. And also it is good because it doesn't ruin your night vision when you've got a red LED. If you go from a bright white light and then just go look into the dark, so if you turn it all off, you, you can't see anything for a few minutes before your eyes adjust, whereas the red light, it doesn't bother you for that. So, yeah, and this one's got a really decent sized battery. So if I just flick this off, I think it's a five, yeah, it 5,000 milliamp battery. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, so it's quite a chunk of a battery, is that? So it will obviously last a decent amount of time for probably a few days really when you're out and about especially if you just keep it on the lowest sort of setting each time um, I went for a run the other night with this on uh, I had it on the lowest setting on the main beam for running along like a pretty flat trail and I could see even at like a fairly fast running pace on the lowest setting if you had any technical ground I'd definitely up it one or two and the um, burn time on the lowest setting is that amount <laughs> and uh, on the highest setting being the turbo well the sort of turbo on the top one uh, second one are about the same sort of thing but that is that amount so it does show you that if you keep things on the lower setting it will last a hell of a lot longer um, but yeah anyway let's get out go test this and light up illuminate some rocks Just being careful because underfoot you can see it's quite rocky. Blues over there. But yeah, this head torch is pretty bright. Currently it's on the lowest setting and it's fine just for wandering around, but let's see if I can show you. Let's shine it up here. Just like daylight, unbelievable. Flick it back down again. Save that battery. Right, let's uh, go for a quick wonder. Go on, get on. Just been sat chilling out on the leeward side of these rocks here and the wind is really trying to force itself through like all the sort of gaps and you can really hear it let me flick this down there we go but it's really strange for me because on my camps i honestly can say that i pretty much never can see any lights in the distance that are on houses and things i mean just look around there it's it's actually quite beautiful to see because as I say every time I go out it's just darkness and I might see the occasional headlamp from someone walking up on a mountain somewhere Here. 
Well, we are back in, but I'll tell you what, it's bloody wild out there, especially up on those tops. It's just like a, a wall of wind just pushing against you that's just trying to push you off your feet. And uh, if you're not careful, it's quite easy just to sort of twist an ankle or, you know, fall over. You definitely don't want to be tumbling up here. So, yeah, anyway, this uh, head torch is definitely doing its trick. And it is like black pill illuminations in here, isn't it? All these lights on. But, uh, yes, yeah, awesome. I've got to say, uh, there are different Fenix lights which um, might suit you more so than this one. This one's... Um, obviously pretty good it's got quite a concentrated main beam i'd say which is good obviously for things like fishing if you want to be looking into the distance or into the water or something but um the other ones that might be of uh value to you guys are the uh other one that i've got which is the um hm 65r and i think uh, the 65r as well they've got one called the shadow master which um it doesn't have the orange here it's got a black strap system and the difference is instead of having the flood beam and a main beam it's got a red beam and a main beam so if you wanted one for more of the sort of stealth side of it then maybe that's one to check out as well but anyway regardless of which one of you if you were uh, thinking of getting one you won't be disappointed they are absolutely awesome so Anyway, it has been a pleasure. I didn't make myself a cup of tea. I have just brushed my teeth and I'm now going to strip off and get myself into this nice warm sleeping bag and toasty, warm, ready for the morning sunrise, which I'm hoping should be quite nice. We've got a bit of cloud cover at the minute and it's quite windy, so you never know. It might be beautiful. Anyway, we will see the morning. Morning flowers. Well, it's been a tough old night, I'd say. The wind has just been like harassing this tent. Luckily, we're in a bit of a dip and I've just sort of been picking up on all the gusts, really. But there's constant wind. You can just hear it in the background everywhere. So yeah, it has been a bit of a mad one. But anyway, we are gonna get ourselves up and out and packed away before anyone knows that we've been here. And looking out there now, it's very cloudy still, um, but fast moving clouds, and there was no sunrise. I set my alarm, had a look out, nothing at all to be seen just because it was so grey. So, anyway, let's get on with it, eh, Blue? You're gonna get out? Come on then. Well, there we go, we're all packed up. Leave no trace as always. Make sure that every single time you're out in our beautiful natural world that you are just looking after it, care for it. Make sure that we keep it 
maintained for people to use in the future. And it is beautiful, it really is. So yes, anyway, the weather is coming in. There's quite a lot of moisture in the air now. There's been a couple of rainbows being formed, which has been nice. And uh, yeah, we need to get back to the car. Luckily, it's not that too far of a walk. Quite an easy camp out this one, to be honest. But I have thoroughly enjoyed it. Anyway, the dog's ready. Backpack on. Maybe a waterproof coming up shortly, but we're gonna skedaddle. We've only come 200 yards and been completely battered. That wind is relentless and we're not even onto the exposed tops yet, so that's gonna be interesting. So yeah, currently just sort of uh, perched behind these rocks, just giving us a little bit of respite from the wind. But it has been a pleasure. So nice to get out, just embrace all this and it costs nothing. That's the best thing about it. Once you've got a bit of kit set up, you can get out and just go appreciate these places. I mean, just look at the views all the way around. Yep, and only me here, you can't beat that. Anyway, if you've enjoyed the video, give it one of those. It costs you nothing to do, so just press that button down there and give it a like. And if you'd like to contribute towards the channel, you can do so by buying me a coffee, and uh, possibly as well, you could join the Patreon. And with the Patreon, we've got a little bit of a group set up there, so that's great, because obviously you get a little bit back in return. So anything will help me continue making these videos, so. Anyway, from me and the beautiful blue, we'll see you another time. Take care. Just in time, eh?